Grace and peace, you guys. Happy Friday. Welcome to the Standard of Truth podcast. I am your host, April Chapman. Um, I don't have a a soft opening monologue for you guys today. I I really don't. I thought about recording one. However, what I'm going to talk about tonight, I, I needed to just come on camera and just be as as raw and as authentic um, as possible. So tonight's live stream is going to be a little less structured um, as in previous weeks because this is a very serious topic um, and it's also a very sensitive topic. Um, as you know, here on this show, the name of the podcast is called The Standard of Truth. And so whatever topic I broach, I am not going to sugarcoat it. Um, I, 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 I'm not doing it for the sole purpose of hurting anyone's feelings. However, in order to be found faithful and in order to honor Christ as Lord in my heart um, first, I have to just bring scripture to bear and talk about those things that many of us don't really want to talk about because it steps on too many people's toes. So I want to welcome everybody to the live chat. How are you guys doing? It seems like it's been forever since I've seen you. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart and from the depths of my soul. I want to thank the Standard of Truth YouTube subscribers who have been supporting me on my most recent venture, which is the Standard Home and Living lifestyle brand. So before I get into the content, I just want to say thank you to you guys. Um, It was a little overwhelming at first because once you turn the on switch and the orders start coming, you're like, okay, I got to fill these orders. I got to fill these orders. And stuff was kind of flying off the shelves and I had to reorder some things, which will be here shortly. So I just want to thank you to everyone who has supported the podcast in this way. And I've got some new special products of the week for you. But right now, I just kind of got to get into the topic at hand tonight. So, as you see, of the live stream, I named it Idolatry is What I Do, the profane worship at William Murphy's Dream Center Atlanta. So, a little background story first. I need to know can everybody hear me okay? I don't know what's going on with my own audio, but I sound really low in my own ear. And so leave me a one in the chat if I sound like I'm okay. Um, Thank you so much, Brother Virgil, for the super chat. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Absolutely. Um, And thank you so much, Sister Shamika. Actually... Girl, your stuff is going out in the morning, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know. I will double check. Um, But thank you so much for your support. She said, I ain't want nothing. I just wanted to say, hey, so thank you guys so much for those super chats. Um, Did you guys leave me once? Okay, so I sound fine. All right, well, then maybe I'm just losing my hearing. I I don't know what's going on with that, but oh, well. Anyway, um... Why did I decide to do this topic tonight? Well, for one, my subscribers, you guys keep me stocked with things to talk about. And so uh, one of my day ones hit me up on Messenger. It was like, I don't even think he said anything. He just sent the video. And um, I watched it and I was like, see, this this is why I can't. This is, this is why I can't. Um, I'm going to share with you some footage. And to be fair, I don't want to misrepresent the Dream Center. I've actually done a video on Bishop William Murphy in the past, and it wasn't um, a favorable one, right? A couple of months ago, we had Bishop William Murphy um, pretty much upset um, about the fact that Roe v. Wade was overturned. And so I basically provided some biblical critique and commentary on why that was problematic and why I felt that him and many of the other pastors that kind of roll in his circles were wolves because wolves do not 
um, shield the sheep from the truth. Um, even if the sheep don't want to hear it, they're going to be faithful to scripture and tell the sheep what thus saith the Lord. Um, and in the capacity of pastor in that particular video, he was not doing that. And um, so for that reason, you can go back and watch that video. It's buried down probably last summer. Uh, I think the, 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 the thumbnail has some purple in it. So if you want to go back and watch that, I would suggest you do that. But tonight we're talking about a little different issue, but it stems from the same man-centered worship and misguided focus um, that we tend to see in a lot of these false churches. And what is that? Um, it's idolatry. And so it's no secret, if you saw in the thumbnail, I had posted a banner of some Greek letters. So for those of you um, who are unfamiliar with Black Greek lettered organizations, this video is not a critique of that um, system, if you will. It is, but it's not. There have been other content creators who have done phenomenal jobs explaining um, the incompatibility with of Christians and Greek letter organizations. I would suggest you reach out to uh, or go to Titus 2's, Miss Titus 2's channel. She has a catalog of interviews and biblical critique explaining the issues with that. This video is going to just be a little bit more specific as to how the man-centered idolatry and false god worship has crept into the church. And so I'm not going to be able to point. I'm just going to show the video and then I'm going to come back on and we're going to discuss it from a biblical perspective. So give me one quick second. Let me get this queued up here.
I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm just, I'm just getting it together. So, um, you guys saw that. <clears throat> so to make sure I wasn't misrepresenting, um, this religious institution, um, I was like, okay, you know, I understand within black church culture, we tend to, you know, during the month of February, we, we celebrate our ethnicity and, and the, the gains that we've made historically as a people. And so, you know, you want to pay homage, uh, you know, to people who came before you and paved the way. So I was like, okay, you know, maybe this was a, uh, auxiliary black history program. And they decided that this would be one aspect of them honoring, uh, their ethnic identity. But then I was told, no, no, this wasn't like a separate black history program. This was actually during a worship service. So to my understanding, the Dream Center has like Saturday services for people who just can't make it to church on Sunday. So they, they, you know, um, and I assume they also may have services on Sunday as well. I don't I don't run in these circles, but. To my understanding, that is the case. And this was in a service. But even if it wasn't, um, there is a lot to unpack here. And um, for this reason, I don't even have a second segment. We're just, we're just going to be dealing with this topic from a biblical perspective. Um, and if I step on your toes, if I step on your toes, you will be okay. Because at the end of the day, the only thing that matters is, is God please. It doesn't matter if the old auntie over on the east side of town named April has issues with this. You know, it doesn't matter that, you know, if some church mother on the south side of town found issue with this. Our thoughts and opinions on this are completely irrelevant and it does not matter. All that matters is God spoken on this issue. Are these things that should be named among believers? And is idolatry something that either the Lord takes serious or it's something that he just turns a blind eye to because it's not that big of a deal? Like those are just some of the things that matter at the end of the day. So one thing that you noticed uh, when this tribute first began was the announcer said, you know, you know, Greek life is a lifetime commitment. And, you know, this, this goes beyond our, our collegiate day, but it's more so about your lifetime allegiance. And I thought that was very interesting because if, you, you know, and I'm not Greek, I've never been Greek. I've never had a desire to really be um, a part of any of these organizations. So I don't have a dog in this fight. Like I'm, it just, you know, like me, no, never mind. But one thing that I do know about these that is you do edge and you are initiated in and the oaths um that you take indicate that you are in this for life the expectation is when you yoke yourself with these organizations that you are in a covenant relationship with them forever um now praise be to god there have been many people who've come to the of the fact that this is blatant idolatry and it is sin and that it's offensive to God and they have denounced and I praise God for those individuals and I get it. Some of the pushback that I'm going to get is, well, you know, everybody is on a different journey in sanctification and everybody's not at the same point. That is fine. We can actually make an argument for that, but that is not the issue. We don't get to claim ignorance on things that have been directly revealed in the pages of Holy right? For example, we're not held responsible for things that the Lord has not revealed through his word. So let's say I am trying to discern the will of the Lord for my life. And I'm like, Lord, you know, do business or do up another business, right? We don't have an explicit text in scripture that says, April, thou shalt not close your business right now because it's not the right time. 
But there are explicit texts in scripture that tells me how I'm to conduct my business and how I'm supposed to um, engage in commerce and fair dealings with people. Like, so the things that the Lord has revealed, those are the things that I am responsible for and I'm held accountable to. So idolatry is one of those things that the Bible is so, it's so loud, like a deaf man can hear it. The scriptures are very clear about God's view of idolatry. We see through scripture how the Lord, his own chosen people, were guilty of the sin of idolatry time and time again, and how it did not go well with them. And we can fast forward into the New Testament, and there is much to be said about idolatry in the New Testament. So you can argue, well, that's Old Testament and we new covenant. You're right. We are. We we have a better covenant and Jesus is better. I'm not even trying to, if you're saying, April, you can't to the 10 commandments. Fine. We can go there. It's reiterated in the new covenant. So if you claim the name of Christ and you claim to be born from above, this does concern you. So we see here, this is Pastor William Murphy's church, right? He pastors a church here in Decatur. And I don't really want to call it a church. I'm going to call it a religious gathering because to call it a church would imply some Christian distinctives, meaning a church is the ecclesia, the called out ones. Those, the church is made up of believers, people who've been regenerated by the Holy Spirit, right? They have renounced their former sin, they've repented of their sin and placed their faith in Christ, and they gather with other believers who share in that same faith, right? So the church is not necessarily a building, but it is a gathered body of believers who happen to gather at a designated place, and we share some distinctive things in common. One of those is that we worship the one true God in spirit and in truth. And that we come together, um, we can make an argument if it's not on the Lord's day, but when we come together, we do things, right? We sing songs and hymns and spiritual songs. We make melody in our heart is unto the Lord, right? Um, we come together to hear the preached word of God, right? We, we come and we have shepherds, elders, right? Who've been appointed in every town, right? And they expose. Meaning they say this is what revealed scripture has said, right? There are other distinctive things that happen, and it might vary from denomination to denomination. But one thing is true about the gathered body of believers is that we are worshiping in spirit and truth, and we're worshiping one true God. And one thing we know about the one true God is that he shares his glory with no one. Like, he's like, I am the God that created the heavens and the earth. I know of no other gods. Now, we have false gods, right? We have idols that we prop up in the place of the one true God. And we have idols in our lives. It might be things. It might be relationships. It might be organizations that sit on the seat of our heart and take the place of the worship that is supposed to be directed to the one true God. But one thing we know. Christians don't participate in idolatry. Why? Because it's offensive to God and he will share his glory with no one. So another thing that I mentioned or heard mentioned in the video was that you and I, T.Y., right? There's this unity. And my question is unity on the basis of what? Because Last time I checked, my unity in the body of Christ is with other believers, but it's on the basis of the fact that we worship the same God and that we've been born of the spirit and we've been grafted in and adopted into the family of God. That's the basis of our unity. I share no unity with anyone else outside of the household of faith. Even if you're born again and you still have familial relationships, you know, you got your mom and your daddy, your brothers, sisters, your cousins, your aunties and your uncles, and they're all those extended family. Those 
those familial relationships are still important, but scripture teaches that who are my mother and my brothers? It's those who do the will of the father. Those are the ones that's my new spiritual family. So I'm, tr I'm confused when I hear the announcer say, you know, unity, I get it. You've got nine different Greek letter organizations here. So I'm assuming that she is talking about that us members of these nine Greek letter organizations were coming together and we have unity. So yeah, nine different false gods all under the banner of some sort of gathering, uniting together basis of what I'm trying to understand. It's, this this issue is not a matter of us not having enough scripture, right? Because I when I go through the scriptures that talk about how offensive this is, you're going to have opponents who say, um, you know, well, I I I I I hear what the scripture says, but this is not a matter of not having enough scripture. I know for a fact that Bishop William is not that ignorant scriptures that he doesn't know that there is something significantly wrong here. The issue is, is that he don't care. How do I know that he doesn't care? Because his ministry does not reflect a New Testament church in function, in word, or in deed. The gospel of Christ is absent and you get a replacement with this new religion. There's something else going on here. If you go to the website, it will tell you that, you know, we're, we're all about social justice. And, and, and some of the language on the website, uh, they're speaking Christianese, but we have definitions. One in particular, one of their distinctives or, or, or core values is worship. So I'm looking, I'm like, okay, I see worship. And in this segment that I just showed you, there is indeed a whole lot of worship going on. But it's the worship of self. It is man-centered worship. It is worship of false gods, and deities that are raising themselves up against the knowledge of God and are actually competing for time and attention that should only be dedicated to the worship of the one true God. That is clear. I don't see how on any planet, even in the most liberal of churches, how you can take time away from worshiping in spirit and truth, the one true God and say, we're going to take a pause for the cause and we're going to celebrate the divine nine, nine false gods in church. And not only that, but say, going to demolish them and we're going to do our stroll. We're going to do our little dance and our little claps. Y'all don't think that's worship. Oh, it is indeed worship. All the hand gestures and the signals, it is worship. And even if you're participating, you're like, but I'm, I'm not worshiping God when I do this. No, you're right. You're not worshiping the one true God, but you are worshiping the God of this world, you're worshiping the demons that are represented by each and every single one of those idols. Because each and every single one of those idols has a Greek God and every false God, behind every false God, there is a demon. This is what the scriptures teach. So I, I don't see how it can be explained away, nor do I see how William Murphy can claim, claim ignorance and say, you but I don't see it in the scriptures where, no, there aren't enough scriptures to explain this away. But I am convinced that most, starting with the leadership on down, are degenerate. They love the things that feed their flesh. And what we saw on display was straight carnality. Just, it, it, it doesn't get any more obvious. It was a carnal, fleshly display of man-centered false god worship of the worst kind. What I also saw was relativism and pragmatism, meaning, well, we're black, right? And many of the members here belong 
into um, one of these Greek lettered organizations. So in order for us to be relative and to really make services pop and being and be, be like the new it thing on the block. We abandon the testimony of scripture that talks about what the church is and who the church is for and what the church should be doing. And we do this other stuff instead because it feeds our flesh, right? Like if, if I was an unregenerate unbeliever dead in my sin, I, I would have probably enjoyed all of that. I probably would have been like, yeah, ooh, yeah y'all get it. Like, ooh, ooh. like I, 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 I can just imagine. Because I remember when I was dead in my sin, spiritually, just no spiritual life whatsoever, I enjoyed that display of carnality. It would have, it would have just been amazing, right? But when you're born of the spirit, these things are supposed to bother you. Like you're supposed to just be like, this is blasphemous. Like, why are they in church doing this? Like nobody, nobody in that building was just like, um. I don't, I don't think this is appropriate. Like, why are we, aren't we Christians? Like, why are we doing this? No, it got full fledged acceptance and, and everybody was just, just doing their thing. I mean, they was, they was getting it in. They, I, I don't know. Um, on false God worship, you have all of this carnal secular music being played in the church. And, and every, every, everybody's just comfortable and it's like, it's no big deal. This is, this is what we do. This is, this is how we get down. Even if you're a new convert, you, you, a new convert would have been convicted. Like, nah, I don't, I don't think this was appropriate. They may not have been able to point the book chapter verse. I was inappropriate, but they would have been like, this is a tad bit too far. So my overall analysis on the on the surface is that the Dream Center is spiritually dead. There, there, there's no spiritual life there, and they're not interested in making disciples. They are interested in filling the seats with more corpses of spiritually. I, I, I um, because it just gets worse. As, as the years pass, church and its pastor drifts further and further away from orthodox Christian practice, Christian doctrine, all things that Christians are known for, they just doing the opposite. From his advocacy for being pro-choice and the poor excuse that he presented for that to now this, I don't know what else we need to the next thing I want to talk about, I talked about relativism and pragmatism, right? It's like, well, justify the means. Like when we do stuff like this, we don't do it often, but when we do it, you know, people enjoy it. And, you know, this is why the churches down the street can't fill up their churches because they're not doing what we're doing. This, that's pragmatism. That's like, well, we'll do it. And it doesn't have to be biblical, right? It doesn't. Oh, I think I'm experiencing an internet issue too. Hold on something uh, getting a yellow which means internet is uh, a little spotty hold on it's lagging real bad it's getting better we had some inclement weather here you guys so i'm hoping that's not the reason but i can see that there are some connectivity issues and i'm gonna try to um get through this the best that I can. Um, I ain't gonna get super spiritual say it's the devil jumping in the street. It's the internet is just not that great. Um but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get hey he might eat now whenever truth is spoken I, I would agree with that the devil's mad he's mad like he don't have no joy he don't have Jesus in the heart like he's Satan right um so information like this that um is not popular and that will tend to bring conviction of sin and actually lead people to repentance. Um, I, I, I would definitely agree uh, with that. I'm still lagging, some, but I, I'm going to keep going. No, don't, don't bind the internet connections. Don't, don't do that. 
We just gonna pray. We just gonna pray. Um, the other idolatry. So we we have false worship. We saw that on display. Um, but we also have ethnic idolatry, and I talk a lot about ethnic idolatry a lot. And the the, the reason why I say in addition to the relativism and the pragmatism is why we have ethnic idolatry is because in circles like this, even when they know the truth, they would rather say, but this is our heritage, right? Like this is as black people in this country, you experience that in the third and we had to create our own spaces and our own organization. So we're just honoring And we're just, you know, um, remembering our history. Okay, that you might make an argument for that. It's still idolatry. Because for the Christian, we don't elevate anything above the knowledge of God. We don't take time away on the Lord's Day or Saturday or whenever we are gathering for the purposes of worship. I don't care who it is. I don't care if it is a patriotic Sunday and you want to take a pause for the cause. We, we don't do that on the Lord's Day. So it's the same for my black folks. We don't take time for worship that is supposed to be God-centered and then put the focus on us and our achievements and what we have done. We just, we just don't do that. And so to me, this is just another form of ethnic idolatry because we just love being black so much that we would offend a righteous and holy God for the sake of celebrating things that the Lord has already explicitly said that he hates. Believers worship. I would argue that what we saw in this on display, it was absolutely worship. It was absolutely worship, but it wasn't worship of the one true God. The term spirit and truth, right, means that when we worship the one true God, we're worshiping him in when we say in the in the spirit of Christ, according to how he's revealed himself in scripture, some and we worship, we're worshiping him in in consistent with his character and his nature. That's what it means to worship in spirit. In the spirit of the Godhead, that's consistent with his character and nature. It has nothing to do with this external demonstration of, oh, I'm worshiping in the spirit. No, no, no. It is, it is not an outward thing, right? Worshiping in spirit, it, it's the, who is the object of our worship? It's the who and the what. It's not the manner. It's the object of our worship and on what basis. Are we worshiping him? How he has prescribed for us to worship him? Or are we creating in our minds something that we think is acceptable to him? Kind of like Nahab and, and, and Abihu, and that, that didn't end up too well for them. We don't get to worship God how we want and think that he's going to accept it. It just doesn't work that way. So for that reason is why I would say this is definitely... False God worship and idolatry of the worst sense, but there's also the ethnic worship, the ethnic idolatry, because when we come to Christ, we lay all of that at the foot of the cross. I love being black. I I mean, melanin is beautiful. That's great. But there's no eternal value in this. All it does is reflect the beauty of God's creation and reflect his glory in the earth in the sense that we're all different shades of melanin and we're all different ethnicities, but we don't worship that. We don't worship what we've accomplished. We don't worship the ancestors. We don't worship any of that. And that can look different in different settings, right? Um, The main issue here is that this is supposed to be a gathering of Christians, but I would argue that I can't, I can't call this sin at all. This is paganism. This is pure, pure paganism. I mean, 
I, I said, I'm already not going to get into a whole long drawn out explanation of the history of these organizations and their, their rituals and their oaths and all the other, the things that they do that are of pagan origin. Other content creators have done that. If you're in one of these organizations, you already know this. You might press that truth and on your in unrighteousness, but you already know this. But for those who don't, like I said, go and visit Sister uh, T- Miss Titus too. She's done extensive content on this, and it's no secret that it is a deeply deep, dark, and of demonic origin, and that it is worship. Because if you guys have a hymnal and you, you you're bowing down at altars, like that, sounds like worship to me. I I don't know. And you may say, oh, well, I don't do any of that anymore. Well, you're still yoked up with them, and now it's in the church. Obviously, it's that important that they had to, to them, black his- this is black history. We couldn't maybe had a, a Friday night event where we talked about, you know, people in history that have made strides, and if it wasn't for their sacrifice, we wouldn't be here. This was their idea of celebrating the achievements of black people was to worship false gods in a church and demonstratively so. I mean, I'm talking about with full regalia and 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 the calls and the, the signals and, and all of that. It's just blasphemy. It's blasphemy and it's idolatry. The main point I want to drive home is that there is no neutrality. And that neutrality is a myth. What do I mean by that? I mean, some will argue and say, oh, well, you know, this isn't really spiritual. It's kind of just benign. It's a spiritual. It's not spiritual. It's not demonic. It's kind of somewhere in the middle. No, there's no, there's no neutrality, right? Um, either something is of God or it is not. We don't have the nine activities and things that we do. We are either doing something as unto the Lord or we're not. And if we're not, there's only one other alternative. So to say that this is neutral and that Christians, now if you're a pagan and an unbeliever, this message ain't for you. I'm talking to Christians, those who profess Christ and know there's no difference. Well, I profess him, but you know, he ain't really Lord. Or I say I'm a Christian, but I'm not really a disciple. These other categories that y'all keep inventing don't exist. You're either a follower of Christ and you are his disciple and he is Lord over your life or he don't know you. That's it. There is no, I profess him with my mouth, but I'm still kind of living out here doing my own thing. That means you're not a Christian. You're an unbeliever. You're, You're Christian in name only, which is no Christian at all, because the Bible doesn't speak of a category of people that are un that are not known by the Savior. If he died for you and purchased you with his blood, you live for him. You don't live for yourself. You don't do what you want to do. You're (coughs) you're completely, completely submitted to the Lord Jesus. And that's, that's it. Why? Why is the devil trying to choke me? Like, (coughs) (coughs) excuse me. I was literally like started choking out of nowhere. Have y'all seen me take a sip of anything to drink since I've been on this live stream? I've drank nothing. Out of nowhere, just start choking. Hold on. Y'all better pray. Yes, please go ahead and hit the like button. Thank you. I appreciate that. There are only two types of people. Thank you, um, Chicken Grease. You are either a child of God or you are children of wrath. Now, you can be transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. That's what happened to me. Praise be to God, right? Like I was literally in the world living according to the pattern of this world. Dead in my sin and trespasses, living for myself. Satan was my father, right? So this this is not some self-righteous, holier-than-thou message. This is 
a, I was a wretch on dead with no spiritual life and was made alive in Christ Jesus. So this message is for those who, if you're struggling with what you watched and you like, I see on some level it's bad, but I don't really understand. I am telling you there is no neutrality and that there are only two options. You are either dead in sin or you have been made alive in Christ Jesus. You're not, you're not, you're not on the road or the path there. You're either there or you're not. And you know, you know, because believers, we might struggle from time to time with an assurance of our salvation, but because we believe the testimony of scripture that those who will be saved will endure to the end, sanctification. And, 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 and being a disciple of Christ, we know that we're at war with our sin. We're not just given, given over to our sin. We're, we're, there's a war. And we recognize that sanctification looks different from person to person. But what cannot be said of the, of the Christian is that we're just living blatantly in unrepentant sin. And this, this idolatry that we saw on display like, there needs to be repentance for this. There needs to be, like, like, dude, what, William, what is you out here doing, bro? Like, is the money that good that you you would abandon what you know the scriptures teach, and then willingly use the sheep that you are in charge of shepherding? I call you wolf, but the sheep that you've been, you've placed yourself in charge of shepherding, that you would just allow this and it's celebrated and then advertise. Like it was no, like they prepared for this. They were preparing for this false God worship. They were ready. They had the outfits picked out. Like it, it, it was planned. This wasn't a spontaneous thing. Every member of the organization kind of knew what they were going to do. And, and they made special provision for this. This is sinful and it is wrong. Paganism. Paganism is always with demon and darkness and, and, and devil worship. And we know that these Greek letter organizations are nothing but outright paganism. Don't come at me talking about it's about the community service. Because if you really cared about the community, you wouldn't feel the need to have to be a member of these organizations to serve your community. You would just serve them in the name of the Lord Jesus. Why? Because as believers and disciples of Christ, we do good to those in the household of faith. We care for the orphans and widows. We do good to all people, to all men. We want great outcomes for everybody. That's why we make disciples and give the gospel. But you don't need to do that under the auspices of false God worship. Like that's just an excuse that's typically presented to say, oh, well, they, they do so much good in the community and, you know, the mentoring of the young children. And okay, I get having a heart for the community and a passion for people, just go serve. But if you find yourself that you just can't do it unless under the umbrella of this organization, therein lies the idolatry. That's just another excuse that you will present so that you can hold on to the thing that you love so much. So what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about praises to the one true God and how it just doesn't lead you to want to do this um, because typically there should be some sort of conviction of sin. But um, more importantly than that, this is spiritual. It is indeed spiritual and how we know it's spiritual. Let me, let me explain. It is impossible to be involved in these organizations and divorce yourself from the secret codes, the rituals, the elements of religion that are present, the mythology, right? The psychology that's involved during the initiation process, along with mixes of history, anthropology, 
and civics and then attempt to dismiss this as non-spiritual. Everything that I mentioned has a spiritual component to it. So we can't, we can't this from the spiritual. We, we just can't do it. It, it, it. It's not going to work. And to help you understand <clears throat> just what the scriptures have to say about idolatry, I'm going to go to um, Deuteronomy 32, and I want to just read just a few verses to give you guys some context, right? Because like I said, this, this is not a matter of my opinion. <clears throat> I don't hate William Murphy. Actually, I, I would love to see him come to repentance and just drop to his knees and submit his life under the lordship of Jesus. I would celebrate that because then that means he wouldn't be leading these people astray. But I also believe that um, while the Lord, according to his will, can snatch people out of these false religious systems, we have <coughs> we have these false religious systems as a form of judgment, right? Where God kind of gives people over to a reprobate mind to do things that not ought to be done, right? Like ungodly people who pervert the grace of God into sensuality and, and they just blatantly in his face present false worship and strange fire unto the Lord um, and do it in doing it in the name of Christ. But I want to read um, Deuteronomy 32. Uh, actually, yeah, I want to start at verse 16. And when, it, when I refer to they, um, the context of this is the children of Israel and just their abominable, ab abominable deeds that were done in the sight of the Lord. And this talks about what they were doing um, and the implications of it. So. Read, let me just read this real quick. It says, they stirred him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations, they provoked him to anger. They sacrificed to demons that were no gods and to gods they had never known. To new gods that had come recently, whom your fathers had never dreaded. They were unmindful of the rock and you forgot the God who gave you birth. So. <clears throat> excuse me the reason why i read that is because in in greek text i'm greek lord have mercy in the hebrew text there are these things called um parallels right so a lot of times when you're reading in the text of scripture a phrase will be mentioned then another phrase will be mentioned that will parallel that and oftentimes that is done to communicate the same idea just in different words so in this case, the parallels include strange gods and then demons that were no gods. So grammatically, the demons and the foreign god are the same, right? The scriptures compare these foreign gods that, that the children of Israel were worshiping. They're paralleled to false gods, right? And so the, the text clearly connects pagan worship with evil spirits. The false gods are in contrast to the one true God. In that text, the rock was in reference to the one true God. Let's go over to Ephesians 5. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't know what's going on. Um, why all of a sudden I can't talk, but that's okay. May God be glorified. Ephesians 5 verses 1 through 14. I know that's a lot. Right. But when we're talking about things like this, the only standard that I know and the only opinions that I have are the ones that are in scripture. Right. Like I can provide commentary all day long, but scripture is going to be the final arbiter of these things. So Ephesians 5 tells us, therefore, be imitators of God. Thank you so much, sister. <coughs> sister Lisa that super chat john 10 11 through 14 i'm gonna go ahead and star that and we can absolutely um we can absolutely explore that one that's a good one thank you so much for 
mentioning that. Let's do that. Give me one quick second. Right now, I'm trying to just catch my breath and not choke. Um, <clears throat> Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not be named among you. Who is the you? This is Ephesians 5. This is the church, believers, New Testament, New Covenant saints. Those things are not supposed to be named among you as improper among saints, as is proper among saints. Let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking, which are out of place, but instead, let there be thanksgiving. For you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or or covetous, that is, an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of God and Christ. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not become partners with them. For at one time, here's the key, you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. I'm going to read that again. For people who say, well, why can't you just live and let live and just let them people over there do what they want to do? I can't. I can't. Scripture compels me to say something. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead, meaning don't do this and then do nothing. Don't do this, but instead do this. The instead part is expose them. Yes, this video is to expose the unfruitful works of darkness that were done in a church by a supposed Christian church, right? In a service that was just, it, this was just such an offensive stench to God. I don't understand Unless you were just dead in sin, that is the only way that you could have sat there and be like, hey, ain't nothing wrong with this. I thought it was nice. It was quite entertaining. Like they just, they was really getting it. Yes, you are right. You are absolutely right. They was getting it in all right. They were worshiping their God in, in spirit and in truth. Yes, in the spirit that's behind all of these divine nine organizations, they were worshiping in that spirit, right? Like we lift up holy hands unto the Lord. They were lifting up their hands too. They were profane hands, but they were lifting them up, right? I mean, it's, I, I don't, I don't know what else needed other than the fact that you have to be spiritually blind to not see how this was a problem. And if that's the case, I get it. The, 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 the solution to spiritual blindness is the gospel. So we're going to get to that. But let me finish this. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. That's what we're doing. For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. Right? It's shameful to even talk. The stuff that was done in secret, the oaths, the rituals that are spiritual in nature. Right? It is, it is shameful to talk about that stuff. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise. Making the best use of the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Well, we know the will of the Lord is that we don't worship false gods in the house of the Lord. We know that much. We should be able to discern 
The will of the Lord is not what we witness in this video. We also can discern that the will of the Lord is that we are to shun the appearance of evil, right? Thank you. I got it. Sorry, that was my little stage hand sending me a note. Um, let me finish. <clears throat> Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart and giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. So why am I doing this? Because if I was snatched from the kingdom of darkness and translated into the kingdom of light, it is my job, not my special job because I'm not special. It is every believer's job to shine light in dark places. And what we witnessed, that was darkness. That, that, that is a synagogue of Satan. That is not a church. True churches that are separated and set apart, the ecclesia, don't permit, do not give license to, and do not approve of false god worship, period. And here, not only is it a, it is celebrated. So that now, not all the church is in sin, and that was leading other people to sin. It's, it's, it is just a bunch of foolishness. How is this edifying to people? How are people learning that what is wrong with them and that they have a spiritual problem in light of celebrating? idolatry and false gods. I, I mean, I don't, I, I don't, I don't know what else to say, but what I do know is that God hates idolatry. He shares his glory with no one. And it's not just, well, I do this in my spare time, but God is here. It's like, no, no, no. It is, it is for Christ. I live. And for Christ, I die. It is Christ over everything, period. You can't have allegiance to these two things and something not take priority. If you have, a, you, you, you have an allegiance, right? They, ain't gonna, they can't occupy the same space. And you can't partake of the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. It, it just does not work. Let me go to Jeremiah 16, 10 through 13. Let me just go there. Um, because the sin of Judah, <clears throat> scripture records for us the idolatry that was practiced there. We already know that many people might say, well, you know, I prayed about it. And, you know, well, my organization was built on Christian values. And so it is wholly compatible with my Christian faith. Lies. The heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Like you, if you're trusting your own, you know, imagination and your own heart to be able to come up with some sort of way to legitimize this, that is part of the problem. If scripture is not your final authority, then you will be led astray and you will try to trust your own heart and say, well, I prayed about it and the Lord didn't tell me that this was inappropriate. So therefore, he's already spoken. He's not going to give you a message that is the opposite of what he's already spoken. God has spoken on this issue. Idolatry is a problem. It has no place in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is not Christian. This is pagan and you need to repent. It's that simple. But let me read Jeremiah 17, verse 10. I, the Lord, search the heart and, I te and test the mind to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. Like the partridge that gathers a brood that she did not hatch, so is he who gets riches, but not by justice. In the midst of his days, they will leave him, and at the end, he will be a fool. I have no idea. Who wrote these notes? You know what? I'm reading the wrong chapter. I'm like, this don't make no sense. Woo! <clears throat> I, 
I meant chapter 16, not 17. Verse number 10. Let's try that again. And when you tell this people all these words and they say to you, I have the Lord pronounce all of this great evil against us. What is our iniquity? What is the sin that we have committed against Lord our God? Then you will say to them, because your fathers have forsaken me, declares the Lord, and have gone after other gods and have served and worshiped them and have forsaken me and have not kept my law. And because you have done worse than your fathers, for behold, every one of you follows his own, follows his stubborn evil will, refuse to listen to me. Therefore, I will hurl you out of this land into a land that neither you nor your fathers have known. And there you shall serve other gods day and night, for I will show you no favor. Favor. This is what the word of the Lord was against idolatry. Now, if God's chosen people are guilty of idolatry and he's got these saving words for them, what makes you think you're going to slide? How do you think you can profess the name of Christ and claim to be purchased with his blood? And participate in this and think God is just doesn't take it serious or that, you know, it's no big deal. We were just having fun and reminiscing on our collegiate days like it was wrong then and it's wrong now. It's just wrongness all the way around. But here's the deal. We got to take a commercial break. I got to think what's going on with my throat and I need to. um Give a word from our sponsor. Uh, so will you guys like sit tight? Cause um your girl's throat, I don't know. I need to get a real good cough out. I gotta expectorate, right? Just expectorate some things. And um, we're gonna take a quick break. Yeah, hold on, sit tight for one second. Hey, you guys, thank you so much for sitting tight with me. That was a commercial for the standard and the, blah, 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 the standard home and living lifestyle brand. That is my new lifestyle brand that I have launched distinctly for the believer where you can get all kinds of lifestyle and home and living things that add value to your life and help you to glorify God in all that you do. Just to be clear. I want to thank you guys for your super chats. Thank you so much for supporting the show. I also want to remind you guys, do not forget to like and share this video if it has been edifying to you despite the technical issues we are experiencing. I don't know what is happening with the internet. I still have eight, an eight, an ooh, an eight out of 10 connection. Now it's showing 10 out of 10. I don't know what's happening, y'all. But I'm trying to get me some water in here to kind of help what's going on with my throat. Um, let's continue. Um, I want to understand from my critics what the main issue or concern is. Um, I don't know. Do we need to watch the video again? What What we saw was... During a worship service, um, the Greek organizations were allowed to stroll and perform their worship um, in the place where worship of the one true God is supposed to be taking place. Um, that's what that was. Now, some will argue, no, 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 that's not worship. I, I need you to understand it is worship because 
Um, if you're in these organizations, you already know what it is. Um, you might lie to yourself, but it is it is worship. We we don't see you fervently worshiping the Lord that way, right? Um, it the the topic of of worshiping in spirit and in truth doesn't excite you. The 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 amount of vigor and 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 the amount of energy and and just the loyalty and 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 the enjoyment. We don't see that worshiping the one true God, but you had no problem doing it there. Uh, we're supposed to be at church worshiping um, the God of the Bible. But I would argue since the God of the Bible is not preached there, that um, that's not what's happening um, at that at, uh, the religious organization. It's a religious gathering. It is, it is not a church. Um, I want to go ahead and engage with some of these comments because. Um, there are a lot of them. Let's see. Let me try to see what y'all got going. Are y'all doing all right out there? Here we go. All right. Someone says that the Holy Spirit is the difference between them and us. I would definitely agree. I would definitely agree. Denise says that this reminds her of when Josiah cleaned out the temple. Uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was pretty, pretty bad. Um, no, I'm not gonna put that one up that, um, uh, Miss Danny says it's not spiritually dead. It's just not the spirit of the living God doesn't reside there. Okay. When I say spiritually dead, I'm talking about the spirit of the living God is absent there. Um, they are so <clears throat> I want to say it is Ephesians 2. If I'm not mistaken, let me get there real quick. That talks about the, the posture or the position, the spiritual position of the believer before we were made alive in Christ Jesus. And you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. So Miss Danny is right. There, there's spiritual life, but it's not the spirit of the living God. So in fact, it's death. It's a spiritual death. But it is a spirit behind this, but it's not the spirit of God. It's definitely not the Holy Spirit. But um. It is the spirit that's now at work in the sons of disobedience. So when you see a blatant display of rebellion, open rebellion and disobedience and false God worship in the sight of God, um, I would say that that is representative of being spiritually dead because they're not alive uh, to the spirit of the living God, the one true God. Uh, someone mentioned that the word Christian is so loosely used and I would actually agree with that. So. I have some acronyms that I kind of use like CENOs, Christians in name only, cultural Christians. Um, I don't really like the term carnal Christian because that's an oxymoron, but I will use the term Christians in name only. Those are people that they profess some sort of identity or affiliation with Christianity, um, but they're not regenerate. So... They've not experienced the new birth. And I'm not talking, when I say the new birth, I am talking about where you become awakened, where the spirit of the living God quickens you to where you are aware of your sin, you repent of your sin, and you now live a new life is unto the Lord, um, doing what's pleasing to him, where you don't live for yourself and do what you want and be like, I'm gonna do this. Any no, that's, that's not what it is. And so the Christian in name only is, Kind of like what Ms. Hamilton is saying, they are loosely affiliated with Christian things. They might use Christian language, but um, Jesus is not Lord. Um, and I don't make the distinction that, you know, you can be a follower, but not a disciple. No, you're either following Christ or you're not. There is no neutrality. And there, these, there are, there's no such thing as these other categories of Christians where you kind of got one foot in the world and one foot out. No, you were not saved. Like you're, you're, you're either born again and made alive in Christ Jesus, or you're not. There is no middle category such as this carnal Christian. That's unbiblical. We can't find it in scripture at all. 
believers bear fruit and they bear fruit in keeping with repentance. We all don't bear the same amount of fruit, but we bear fruit. Some 20, 30, 60 fold, but you're going to bear fruit and it is progressive. No one stays a baby Christian forever. That, that just, God is maturing us and sanctifying us and conforming us to the image of his son. He, he doesn't save you so that you could just stay here. That, that just doesn't happen. But um, that, that's a good one. Joseph says, there is no biblical support for believers making lifetime oaths. I would agree. I would agree. Um, we don't, first of all, we're told we're not even to do that, right? Um, and then if we, if we worship in spirit and truth and we're children of the light, why would we want to be yoked with secrecy? Things that are shrouded and secrecy and, 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 and just the underground, like, oh, that verbiage alone should be like, yeah, this is not something that Christians should be identifying with. And I get it. A lot of people are like, well, I listen, I did that in college and, you know, I was young. I didn't really know what I was getting into until I got into it. I get that. There's an argument to be made for that. But once you know, you're held accountable. Remember, I said in the beginning of the live stream, you're going to be held accountable for what's already been revealed. And so you are without excuse and you cannot claim ignorance. My, 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 my source of contention for this live stream was what we witnessed happening in a church service where the God of this world was being glorified and magnified in the same place where Christians are supposed to be worshiping the one true God. Um, Let's see. Uh, yes. Okay. Let's deal with that. That's a good one. Uh, this is my little brother in the Lord, but little brother nonetheless. Their response to your rebuke is that you're a religious Pharisee. Well, first we need to, let's examine who the Pharisees were, right? <clears throat> the Pharisees, uh, the Pharisee equal system was pretty much after the close of the Old Testament. And you have the intertestamental period where there was no prophecy and he was silent in the years. There were all these things happening. And one of those was where Judaism was morphing into something else, where the synagogue or the temple was now, um, you had these, this, these religious ceremonies and you had the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And the difference between the two, not to give a long theological lesson, but the Pharisees believed in the resurrection, um, and I want to say the Sadducees didn't. Um, but what was about this religious system was the Pharisees would add to and yoke commands that were not explicitly said and turned into this whole commerce operation where they were like, you know, it's one thing to be ceremonially unclean, but now you got to clean the outside of your cup, the inside of your cup. It was like all these added rules. And so for my critics who would say, oh, you're just being a religious Pharisee. No, I'm just being a Christian. It's just you, you true believers. It's so you don't meet many of them these days. So it's easy to say that people like me and who share in the same criticism that I am expounding here, it's easy to do an ad hominem attack. What you can't do is deal with the argument from scripture. So if you have book, chapter, and verse in context that could legitimize your false God worship, then okay, great. If you were, if you could build a biblical case to say, April, what you're saying is you're trying to bind the conscience of people and make them do things that God hasn't spoken. I would say then, yes, that's what a Pharisee is. Like a Pharisee is someone who says, not only do you need to dress modest, right? But you can't show your ankles. You can't show your eyes. You need to make sure that all of you is completely covered up. That is adding to the commands of scripture and binding someone else's conscience to something that the Lord has not, there's no explicit command for that. We have an explicit command for idolatry. 
So unless you can build a biblical case that what we witnessed in that visit video was not idolatry and it was not false God worship and that these organizations don't represent false gods, Greek gods, they're called Greek gods. Everyone has, each one of them has a representative God or goddess that represents the organization. Your argument is falling really flat here. You're not doing too well. Build me a biblical case that I'm, what I'm saying is wrong. And I'll repent something that William Murphy's not going to do. I'll do it. I can humble myself and admit that, hey, I may be a little bit off. You know, I am, I am misrepresenting what we saw in that video. And it wasn't worship. It was worship. What else do you call that? Paying homage? Worship. Recognizing and, 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 and high, holding in high esteem? Worship. Unity on the basis of something that's not Christ-centered, it's worship. I don't know. What else do you want to call it? All right. Someone else said, um, you're serving another God. Okay, I don't think that was to me. Um, oh, Miss Winnie wanted to know, I wonder if this happened because black people are renouncing and denouncing their memberships. Perhaps the boule has instructed their pastors to encourage this behavior because that stronghold has been uncovered. You know, Miss Winnie is onto something because they have been, due to the advent of social media, people have been renouncing for years, right? Um, God is awakening and opening the eyes of the blind every day, right? People are repenting all the time. But I think because of the advent of social media, um, people are publicly telling their stories and giving their testimonies and denouncing and maybe membership is down. I don't know. Um, it's possible, but I know these gatekeepers, the aristocracy, you know, people like the Jamal Bryant's and, uh, we might as well just go on and add William Murphy too. Yeah. They, they, they have to, um, maintain the status quo and keep people blind and beholden to these groups and organizations because it benefits them. So that, that is highly possible. I don't, I don't know. Um, now somebody said, if you had called the prayer meeting, you could count the empty pews. Now you're right about that. You are right about that. Sister Lisa says our history, identity, and commitments are in Christ. When are we going to get that? I mean, seriously, this is nothing to play with people. Amen, sister. I would um, agree with you wholeheartedly. Um, someone else mentioned here uh, that people need to renounce these organizations. I had to renounce crossing the equator from the Navy. It goes back to the God of Neptune. Now, that's a new one. Um, I've never heard that one. Um, I think I only had maybe one individual in my family serve in the Navy. I'm unfamiliar with that, um, but that is quite interesting. Let's see. Let me scroll down because I had to scroll all the way up to uh, get to that. Susie Q says Jamal Bryant wears his letters Sunday mornings when he gives his spiritual TED Talks. He does. You're right. Well, we already know the, these men are not pastors. They are hirelings. They are wolves. And I can't even argue in sheep's clothing. I mean, because the sheep outfit is... They've traded it in and they just, they just full wolfery, like just full wolf, just regalia. Um, if, if you go to their website, the Dream Center's website was very concerning to me because it failed to mention the gospel and repentance or sin. I, you just don't find it. And it's difficult for pastors like this to preach on repentance and sin because then they would implicate themselves. And so they just, they just don't. What you get is a lot of moral relativism. You get a lot of live your best life now. You get a lot of uh, motivational speaking cloaked in Christianese. You get a lot of that. Um, but people hearing that they need to be made alive in Christ Jesus and that they're sinful and need to repent, you're not going to hear a whole lot of that. I mean, how do you preach that message? And then in the next breath, you know, say that Roe v. Wade shouldn't have been overturned. Like you would think that they would have been rejoicing that babies, black ones in particular, are not being murdered anymore. But no, they were saddened, saddened so much so that they stood in solidarity and wore T-shirts, right? Wore T-shirts 
to um, express how outraged they were because they wanted to support women. That that's what we saw. Um, I agree with Chicken Grease. While you're here, like, comment, share, and subscribe with the notification bell. Um, thank you very much. So my phone is going off the hook. Huh. Okay. All right, you guys. Um, I don't know what else needs to be said about this. Um, it's just wrong. And people people are going to try to rationalize and, and legitimize this. And there's, there's really no biblical basis to be able to do so. Um, and I get people to say, well, you know, what she's saying, you know, that's for the super saints. You know, we, we, we are not so heavenly minded that we're no earthly good. Well, in order to be earthly good, you have to be heavenly minded because the, the sole purpose of believers being here on the earth is to be a light, to make disciples. That's the Great Commission. You can't do the Great Commission unless you are heavenly minded and you tell people of the heavenly hope that awaits them or the eternal damnation that awaits them if they don't repent and believe the gospel. So. I don't, I don't, you know, I might lose some subscribers from this. There's, there's a couple of faithful listeners of mine that are in these organizations and I get it. It is not personal. It is not against you personally. Um, but to see what I saw in that church service and for it to not grieve you should make you want to make your calling and election sure. Like just search your heart and be like, Lord, like, I've been holding on to this unholy alliance for a very long time. I like the social status that it was giving and bringing me. You know, I like the enjoyment that I get when I'm strolling with, you know, my line sisters or my line brothers. And, you know, but I get it. You still need to repent because you don't have any sort of loyalty or brotherhood or sisterhood with people outside of the household of faith. That is the, the family of God is what you should be joined to. If you call yourself a believer, if you've got other brothers and other sisters that are other on what basis, who's your father? Like if y'all are brothers and sisters, if Christ is not your father, are you, are you yoked with the God of this world? Um, cause I, I don't, I don't, my spiritual family, the family of God, um, we all have the same father. So that would be the question that I have. Does anybody have any questions for me before, um, I head on out? I do have to wrap it up. Um, let's see. I hold no loyalty to wrong. Amen. Amen. Uh, Raquina said he did not get, or she didn't get a notification. I am so sorry about that, but I didn't put this show up until late. So, um, I don't know. YouTube, YouTube doesn't really like my content too much. So it is what it is. Um, hold on one second, guys. I got to send this message. Got it. All right. I needed to send that. Anybody have any other questions? Holiness is still right. Amen. Praise God for the individuals in the live stream who have denounced. Um, I praise God for that. And I get it. You know, some people have to do it in their own timing. But the day you hear his voice, like, don't, don't harden your heart to this message. And don't, you want to be found faithful. Like, some of you know what you need to do. Oh, yes. Okay, I'll play it again. No problem. Let's do that. For those who came in late, here we go. And cultural service activities. Greek membership goes beyond your college experience. This is a lifetime commitment. Come on, let's go. Thank <laughs> you.
They wasn't getting it. They, they was getting it in, all right. Getting it in all their way to hell. Um, yeah. So, <clears throat> I'm with Chantel. I don't understand how anyone with the Holy Spirit could look at this and feel totally unbothered. Yeah. Um, I. Y'all know me. I'm always full of words, but I just. I don't I don't know what else to do other than to look at that and say it's been made manifest. Um, you know, when things like this happen, it's I believe um it's done for a number of reasons. One, to make known those who are his, like to make sure that there are clear distinctions so that there's no confusion. Like you'll be like, well, you know, that church might be okay, but sometimes, you know, every church got its issues. No, no. There have been clear distinctions and lines drawn in the sand to alert the world that that church is not a church of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is a church of William Murphy's own musings. That is his church, right? And he is building followers um, to himself and ultimately. They're not worship. You can't worship God like this. You This syncretism where you're mixing the holy and the profane, like you can't. Where do they do this in scripture 
and it's not met with destruction and annihilation. Like, where does this happen? But it's, uh, it just proves that there's no fear of God in their eyes at all. They don't know God. And it's very, very sad because... When you watch stuff like this, it's sad, but then you can say, Lord, if it had not been for your grace, I, I could be worshiping trees right now. Like I could be worshiping the God, the gods or gods of my ancestors. And by your grace, you drew me to yourself and, and adopted me into the family of God. So we watched it again. Y'all saw it. Um, this happened in a church. It happened in a church or a so-called church, but this is syncretism, right? Where you mix, you know, the holy and the profane and you, you know, you try to call this Christian, but this, this is paganism. It's false God worship. It is paganism and it is evil and it is wicked and it is a stench in the nostrils of the one true God. Um, he's not pleased with this at all. Um, so <laughs> Mark said, these women up here celebrating a life of debauchery. Yep. Pretty much. Nook if you book. Yeah, they were, they were celebrating. They were celebrating the things that the Lord hates in front of the church. It's bad enough that they already did it inside and they had to just take the debauchery outside, um, and add a little cherry on top because it just, this was their, no, it wasn't homecoming. This was a service. So this church has like Saturday services and Sunday. I think this was a sun, a Saturday worship service. Um, no, it wasn't homecoming. This was at a church. It was at a church. Um, yeah, you got old idolaters and young ones. You know, it, it just expands the uh, the spectrum. You had, you know, young ones, young, young false God worshipers, the middle aged ones where I fit in that category. And then you had the old season uh, uh, workers of iniquity. So, yeah, the ones that should know better. But, you know, I do pray that God would have mercy and in his grace. No one is beyond the grace of God. He can snatch the vilest of sinners and clean you up and make you new, make you alive in Christ Jesus. Um, and that honestly is my prayer. And the reason why I do content like this is so people, you can expose it, shed light um, in those dark places. And I, I just want to leave you guys with the gospel. You know, the gospel is that what you saw there that stems from the wickedness in our heart. Because of this Adam's sin, we are a factory of idols. The human heart needs to worship something. We just have, because we were created to worship. And unfortunately, because of sin, we have everything else that is the object of our worship other than the one true God. Our sin separates us from the one true God and causes us to live in open rebellion against him, right? We don't do what he says. We're unable to live a life that's pleasing to him. We don't seek after him, but we seek after everything else that gives us satisfaction in this life, except for the pure hunger and thirst after God and his nature and his character and who he is. So sin enters the world separates us. We're now at enmity. The, the, the scriptures say that unless you've been born again, you, you are his enemy. What we witnessed were enemies of God, worshiping the God of this world and doing it under the guise of Christianity. But my message is very, very simple. Once you're made aware of your sin, and acknowledge that you are a sinner and you've committed offenses, not just this offense of idolatry. It could be the offense in the sin of fornication or adultery. Maybe you lie, maybe you steal. Whatever it is, no one is righteous. No, not one. No one understands and no one seeks for God. All have turned aside and gone their own way. But the good news is, is that God from the foundations of the world 
already had a plan of redemption to save a people for himself, for his glory. And when you believe that the Messiah, Christ who came, who is God in the flesh and dwelled among us, when you believe that the way to be reconciled to their righteous and holy God is through by grace, through faith in the sinless lamb of God, who is Jesus, who came to take away the sins of the world, he will make you a new creation. He will take out your heart of stone, the heart that hears this message and sees and listens to what I've been saying about the idolatrous practices that we witnessed in that video, the heart that bucks up against that message. And it, ma it makes you feel some sort of kind of way. I get it. Because you're like, I'm in one of these organizations and I don't really look at it like that. You know, those are just, no. The reason why you're struggling and there's this war and you're like hemming and hawing between two, faltering between these two opinions is because you know it's wrong and you're trying to sanitize it and legitimize it and you can't. And it's because the God of this world wants to keep you dead and he wants to keep you blind. He wants to steal. He wants to kill. He wants to destroy. But Christ came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And that abundant life doesn't include living your best life now. It means escaping the wrath and penalty of God because all of us are under his wrath and under his judgment. But those of us who are in Christ Jesus, we get to stand before God the Father faultless, meaning we are not guilty. So the sin that you commit the, the idolatry, the fornication, the adultery, all of the works of the flesh, when you're found in Christ, God the Father doesn't see that sin. He sees the righteousness of Christ. That's what you need. You needed Christ's righteousness imputed to you to cleanse you of that sin, right? So that you can stand before the Father faultless. Because Continuing down this road, trying to legitimize this idolatry and this sinful foolishness, this paganism, cloak this Christianity, it's going to lead you into damnation. And that's just the truth. It may, it, listen, I ain't never said that this message was pretty and it ain't going to make you feel good, but it's right. And it's the truth. And it's the message that is, I don't have anything else to present to you to sanitize this and to soften the blow. William Murphy needs to repent. All of the people in that video need to repent. And if you are not in Christ, you need to repent too. And, and I just, I say that because I love you and I don't want to see you perish. I don't want you separated from your creator suffering and, and, and atoning for all of eternity for the sins. Cause it, you'll never be able to, you can't offer. There's no righteousness that you can offer God and say, well, I've done this. I, I served all the boys in the girls club. I do good works. My good outweighs this one little area, this one little heart affection that I have with this Greek letter organization. This is my only issue. He, it, no, that ain't your only issue. It's not. This is a matter of the heart. This is a matter of unrighteousness and unholy affections and oaths that have yoked you spiritually to these organizations that lead you to believe that you could stand in a church where you're supposed to be worshiping God and do this instead. It's spiritual blindness and it's deception. And I'm sorry if the man you call your pastor made you, led you to believe that this was okay because he sanctioned it and the church sanctioned it. So it must be right. You're being deceived and they lied to you and you need to run. You need to run like your life depends on it and run to the savior because this, this, this ain't it. This, mm, mm -mm. this ain't it. This ain't it. Um, I don't, yeah, somebody said he fell away a long time ago. It, it, I don't, I would just say, no, the, his deeds are just being made manifest because 
I hold to the doctrine of eternal security. Those who are who belong to Christ, they endure to the end. When you see things like this happen, like in the beginning, a person kind of like the parable of soils, you know, the, the word that seed is sown and it's just like, yes, and they hold it and they, they just, they run with it. And then when the cares of this life or they get corrupted by just the world, they fall away. It ain't like they possessed Christ and then left him. They never had him. That was seed that was sown on shallow ground. There was no root there. There was no true spiritual life there. Um, and so th that's the camp that I would have to put him in. Um, Cause you, yeah, uh-uh, uh-uh. Someone said, um, how is it unifying to segregate God's people in his house? An entire section reserved seats for the insiders who are performing secret rituals while non-Greeks sit and watch. Sister Winnie. You right on the money. Galatians 3 tells us in the context of being, whether it, when you're a believer, there's no Jew nor Greek. There's no slave nor free. There's no male or female. We are one in Christ Jesus. So there's no room for these distinctions based on those who are Greek and those who not. Th that was a real, real good observation, Ms. Min Minnie, because the partiality that's shown here is enough that would force someone to say, I have to reject this on the basis of that alone. Because Christians are not supposed to show partiality. We're not supposed to show partiality on a basis, basis of ethnicity. So that would be the, the, the prevailing definition of racism. We don't do partiality. Uh, we, we wouldn't do partiality in the house of God like this in this way either. Same concept. Um, blind leading the blind. I will agree with that. Baptized paganism. I will agree with that. Um, it is Satanism. It is. It's Luciferian worship, Satanism, paganism, you know, witchcraft, sorcery. Like we can put it all under that umbrella and it's the same. And I'm, I'm not super spiritual. Okay. So I, I project that the comments are going to be lively with the, you know, you just mad because you didn't get in. I ain't never pledged. I ain't never wanted to. Um, it just, the Lord, you know, that's just not my story. Sorry. Um, it doesn't make me any better. I mean, I was still a filthy wretch undone that needed to be made alive in Christ Jesus. And AKA Delta, SG Rose, Zeta, none of those things could have done that for me. Um, I don't need to belong to an organization when I'm clothed in the righteousness of Christ, right? I can serve my community and 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 work uh with my hands for the good of those that I'm surrounded by. And I don't need an organization to do that. I can just do, I can just go and do good work because it's coming from a pure heart. There's no motive. There is no sort of, I don't need an incentive. Um, I don't, I don't need that. Just if, if it's about that, just go do that. Um, but no, you find that they're not going to just go do that. Um, they have to do it in the name of Delta or AKA or whatever. They do that. Um, when and the scriptures tell us everything that we do, we're supposed to do it as unto the Lord. So how are you doing that? But then when you serve your community, you're doing it in the name of Delta. There's the, that's the creeping of the idolatry right there. It's right there in plain view, but yet many are still blind to it and can't even see it. They can't even see it. Just have mercy. Pray for your friends and family that you know has either heard this message before, because I'm not the first person to say this, right? And at one point I was going to do a whole series on this, but Titus 2, she's already handled that. And there's nothing that I can add to that conversation. I strongly suggest you go visit her channel, listen to the testimonies, listen to her, um, just open up the scriptures to explain why this Greek life is wholly incompatible with biblical Christianity. Now, if you just, you know, you, you end the syncretism like that and you don't really care what the Bible say and it's not your final authority, hey, make it do what it do. 
But um, you will be judged for that. And God does not take idolatry like like he slayed, like he just struck people dead for offering strange fire and false worship. It, it's the same God. And it's the judgment is equally harsh just because it ain't happened in real time. Don't mean it's not going to happen. Like you either going to fear God or you're going to fear man. So, um, let me see who my phone going off tonight. Anybody have any other questions? Um, oh yeah. Miss Winnie, Miss Winnie said never in a mosque or synagogue. We we're the only ones that will defile and profane the God that we say that we worship and don't even feel bad about it. She's right. Like this would never happen in a mosque or a synagogue, but with the, in this false Christian system, this Christianity Inc, this church Inc stuff, this stuff happens all the time, all the time. Like you just, you just, it's just irreverent. Um, my thing is. I don't care that they did it at the Dream Center because I don't consider Dream Center a real church, but stop calling it a church and stop identifying with Christianity. Just name it something else and then I wouldn't have anything to say about it. But it's the fact that he continues to parade himself around like he's a church and that it's Christianity that he holds to, but he doesn't. It's why it's so problematic because it, it leads people astray, you know? But praise be to God, God, God will, he will pull his elect out and draw them to a sound biblical church in his timing. But at the same time, God uses means and he uses people and he's using voices like Miss Titus to, to sound the alarm, to let people know that this stuff is not okay. And, you know, I ain't scared. Of, I ain't scared of none of y'all. So I'll just say it. And, you know. I don't mind being persecuted for my faith because I believe the testimony of scripture that says we're going to be persecuted. It's not a matter of if it's a matter of when. Um, and so if I can help just one person, it was worth it. Like the persecution is going to come and I'm okay with that. Even from people that I know love and respect me, they're going to have issues with this live stream. Cause they're going to be like, see, I was with you until you started talking about this. Now I got to unsubscribe. Okay. I'm okay with that. As long as you leave with the truth, this is all that matters. It's, it's all that matters. Right. So. Uh, right. The seed which fell among the thorns. These are the ones who have heard. And as they go on their way, they are choked with worries and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to maturity. Amen. Yeah, I get it. It's the first time you disagree with me. There's no such idea as eternal security. I would disagree. Let's, we got to prove it through scriptures. Yeah, believers, it's not that we must. Okay, when you say endure to the end, uh, do you believe that we're in, we in our own strength are enduring or are we kept um, by the spirit of God? Um, no, the eternal security is there because I'm going to prove it. So let's go to John, Matthew, Martin, Luke. Let's go to John. Um, Let me see. I don't, I don't want to say if it's 17 and it's not, but let me see. It might be. Uh, let's see. I will demonstrate that the scriptures actually do teach um, eternal security or perseverance of the saints, right? That's another term for it. Um, no, John 6. Here we go. John 6. So I'm in John 6, verse number 37. And this is Jesus speaking. Jesus is saying, all that the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me. So now Jesus is about to, he's exegeting his own words and telling you, this is the will of God, the father who sent me. He's saying that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last 
day. For this is the will of my father that everyone who looks on the son and believes in him should have eternal life and I'll raise him up on the last day. So there's a couple of things there. First, when Jesus says all that the father gives me will come, it's not a possibility. He's not saying, you know, all that the father gives me, you know, they might come if they endure or if they manage to, you know, um, not succumb to the cares of this life. It's implying the will is, it is definite. It is, it is, an, it is, it doesn't get any more plain like that will, all that the father gives me. If the father, those of us who are born of, of, of the, of, of the, of the, of the, of the spirit, we are a love gift from the father to the son, right? We are kept by his spirit. So if the father has given us to the son, Jesus doesn't say, you know, who the father gives me, I might raise him up. It's possible that they're going to be raised up. He's like, no, all that the father gives me, not only will they come, not only will they come, but I will raise them up on the last day. Why? Because that's the will of the father. The distinction we need to make is where it says those who believe in him. Belief is not some mental assent to the facts. Oh, I believe that Jesus is the son of God. Listen, the demons believe and they actually shudder at the thought that Jesus is Lord, but they don't have saving faith. They don't have a belief in the son in a salvific sense. They just have a mental assent to the fact that Jesus is Lord. They know that with certainty, but they're not regenerated. They're not born of the spirit. They have a mental assent to the fact that Jesus is Lord. So this belief here is not just some sort of cursory surface belief, right? It implies that one, there's a basis for that belief and there's an object of the belief. Can y'all hear me? It seemed like my audio was doing something crazy. Okay. Um, let's skip down to 44. No one can come to me unless, so this is an if then, like this is not happening unless this happens. No one can come to me unless the father who sent me the father who sent me draws him like it, you dragged. You're being dragged. And I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets and they will be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the father except he who is from God. He has seen the father. But truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. Once again, that belief in this text, contextually, it is not just a mental assent of the facts. It's not, I raised my hand. I said, I believe in Jesus. No, no, no. It is a belief that's rooted and grounded in the fact that the father has given you to the son as a love gift. Jesus purchased you with his blood and he is going to raise you up on the last day. Believers persevere to the end. Those that fall away, they didn't lose what they never had. They never had it to begin with. I think there's a quote that says the faith that fizzles from the first was faulty. For, I'm screwing it up. But basically, saving faith is something that a believer possesses and they persevere to the end. They don't get off track and then be like, you know, I don't really believe in Jesus no more. And then they kind of pick him up again. Then they don't believe him. No, no, no. They actually persevere to the end because all that the father has given Christ will come. It is a surety. It is not a possibility. It is going to happen. Um, I might do a show on that and it's free. If you disagree, I get it, but I like the term perseverance of the saints. It's because those who actually persevere to the end, those are the ones that are being saved. Those are the ones that were purchased, given as a love gift from the father to the son. Hopefully I made sense there. I, I don't know. That was a really long winded. Um, but there are multiple, multiple. Um, yeah, I don't necessarily use the term once saved, always saved because it muddies the waters because first you have to define what salvation really is in, in American evangelicalism. People think that if I walk out, I'm saved. Or if I just say, you know, I believe in Jesus, I'm saved. We would have to have a more in-depth discussion 
for what it truly means to be saved. So I don't use the term. I understand what people mean when they say once saved, always saved, but I don't even use the term um, because I have to get into the weeds of let's define our terms. What do you mean saved? What is salvation in a salvific sense? What does that mean biblically? Because for some people raising your hand and walking an aisle, they'd be like, I'm saved. Or people who were baptized when they were five um, because their parents coerced them to just go down there and do it. They're calling themselves Christians. Someone said it earlier. We're using the term Christian very loosely. And so I tend to say those who profess Christ, because you can profess Christ, but not possess them. Like he ain't Lord of your life. You've not been born from above. You're not regenerated. You're just, you're just a nominal professing Christian. Um, but you don't belong to Christ. He don't, he don't know you, right? Just it's no different than what scripture says in that day. Many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did I prophesy in your name? And I did this and I did that. Like, yes. But Jesus is like, I don't, you're, you're a worker of iniquity. You who practice lawlessness. He doesn't say I used to know you. And then I don't know you anymore. He's like, no, I never knew you depart from me. Like, I don't know you. I don't know. Not saying that he doesn't have knowledge of who you are. He does not know you in a salvific sense. All right. Uh, I don't, I don't know anything about, uh, quoting Calvin. I, I just, I just read the text. Like how did Calvin get into this and Calvinism? Like John six forty four is literally what the scriptures teach. I'll give you another one. Now, you know, if you think this is Calvinism, okay, that's fine. Um, first Peter one, uh, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, those who are elect exiles of the dispersion in Pontus, in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, in the sanctification of the Spirit, for obedience to Christ Jesus. And for sprinkling with his blood, may grace and peace be applied to you. I don't like skipping the greetings because there's a lot of theology there. Um, but I won't get into that. But we could ask, we could ask the question, who are these elect exiles, right? Like, who are they? But Peter tells us, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to what? We're born again to living hope. To what end? To an inheritance that is imperishable. Believers are not given an inheritance that might fade or might perish. Peter is telling us that we are born, raised from the dead, to an inheritance. If you know what an inheritance is, it's something that you get later. The inheritance is imperishable. It, it don't perish. And if imperishable wasn't enough, he says it's undefiled. It ain't tainted. It ain't corrupt. It's undefiled. And then he goes on to say it's unfading in case you didn't understand what imperishable meant. In case you didn't understand that it's undefiled, meaning nothing is coming in. Satan ain't coming in and corrupting this because it's undefiled. He says it's unfading. And what's more important, it is kept in heaven for you. Who? By God's power are being guarded. Not by my power. I ain't that good. I ain't that righteous. Thank God my salvation is kept in heaven undefiled, unfading, and unperishable by the God of heaven. Because if it were up to me, I don't know. It ain't, it ain't too sure. But it's kept by God's power. And it's being guarded by God's power through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. That's deep. That's actually one of my favorite verses. Um, because I, that's the triune work of the Godhead at work. We got God, the father, we got sanctification happening by a work of the spirit sprinkling with his blood. Every member of the Godhead is active 
in the security and the salvation of the believer. Like, I'm sorry. We will persevere to the end, not because we're that great and we're that special. We're going to persevere to the end because we are being kept. We are being kept. Our sanctification and being conformed to the image of son of his son will result in our glorification. Not because we're keeping ourselves, but because God, by his power, is keeping this inheritance unfading, undefiled, and it's imperishable, kept in heaven for us. Now I believe that. Um, yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't know how this turned into that conversation, but okay. Yeah, we can disagree. Uh, P is the perseverance of the saints, eternal security. I mean, I mean, I just read the text. If, you know, I mean, the white pages and the black letters were kind of clear, but it's okay. I, I, I'm okay with disagreement, right? I'm okay. You can't have your presuppositions challenged if everybody agrees with you all the time, right? I'm open to the disagreement. Um, I'm just positioning um, what the scriptures teach regarding us being kept. And um, thank God it is not dependent on me because it's by the work of the spirit that I'm being kept. I, I just ain't that righteous. Just ain't that righteous. Uh, somebody said it's rooted in pride. Uh, let's see. They believe their salvation is of themselves and not of God. Yeah, salvation is of the Lord. Uh, that's what the scriptures teach. And um, I, I, I subscribed, you know, in the video that I just critiqued over at um, the Dream Center, you see a lot of man-centered theology. It's very man-centered. Like man is the object of and the originator of all things wicked. When it comes to salvation and when scripture teaches that salvation is of the Lord and all that the Father has given me will come to me, it's just too many pages in scripture or scriptures in scripture that teach me um, or forces me to have a very high view of God and a low view of man. Um, Romans, uh, uh, I mean, it, all through the pastoral epistles talks about Ephesians, Galatians, how this is something that the Lord does. And so, yeah, we're just, it is what it is. Uh, where's the video? If you want, I will link it. Um, let me pull it up. Let's see the video that I, uh, shared. It, it was pretty blasphemous. I didn't share it in the description box, but I will. So let me go ahead and get it. Okay. Thank you, sweetheart. I will. Um, give me a second, guys, so I can grab the video and link it in the description. Uh, where is it? Here we go. I just don't want it to play. Oh, it won't because I'm getting it. So you can view it for yourself, watch the replay, and leave me a comment to let me know your thoughts. Those of you who did not see the video, um, I have a question going on that logic. Okay, is this a rabbit trail? Uh, if we lose it, how in the world can we make it to heaven? We're awful at being holy on our own. Um, let me see. What was the question? I have a question. Going with that logic that we could lose our salvation, how could we lose it? And if we can lose it, how in the world can we make it to heaven? We're awful at being holy on our own. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, I think the reason why people really believe that a person can lose their salvation is because they don't really understand what salvation truly is and how much of a work of the spirit and a miracle it is the doctrine of regeneration. When we read in Ezekiel where he's like, I will pour clean water on you and I will do this. I will, I will, I will. It's a lot of eyes. It ain't a whole lot. And you going to do this. Like we're caused to walk in his statutes. We're, we're caused to do this and I'm going to do that. Um, 
if scripture didn't lay it out like that, then I could see how people would believe that. But when we take the entire testimony of scripture um, and we allow scripture to speak and we allow scripture to interpret scripture, it is it is difficult to build a case that this salvation that was preordained and for, went through the foreknowledge of God, it is difficult to understand how we are the ones, um, if we couldn't raise ourselves to, to newness of life, how are we going to keep it on our own? I, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't get that one, but okay. Um, let's see. Yeah. Y'all are going on a whole nother rabbit trail. So, right. Yeah. Thank you, bro. Um, so it does not depend on the man who wills or the man who runs, but on God who has mercy. Contextually, absolutely. Um, like the golden chain of redemption, if, 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 if who God has saved, he's going to glorify, he's going to sanctify. Like all of those things are going to happen and it's something that God does. I, I would definitely agree with that. So anyway, you guys, we're at the two minute and two hour and 10 minute mark. I appreciate you guys for sticking there with me through all the technical difficulties, the Satan jumping up in my throat, coughing spells and audio issues. Uh, my goal is to always create a wonderful viewing experience for you, but sometimes I can't uh, predict when things are going to go awry. Before I let you go, I want to share with you guys my top three products of the evening. Um, let's start with this one. Let me show it to you guys. Here we go. This one's really dope. So product of the evening, we have fix your focus. It is a 52 week guide helping you to put God first. It is currently on sale for $17.99 marked down from $24.99. This little gem right here, I like because it is a 52 week in-depth dive on how to, in keeping with the theme of this live stream, the idolatry and making sure that God is first in your life and that you don't have other things, other people, organizations, and other objects of your affection sitting on the seat of your heart. This resource um, is good for that because it can help you start, um, you know, each week fixing your focus on Christ and getting you in the habit of spiritual disciplines. And so that is, this is my product of the evening tonight. You can go ahead and get it. You can click the, uh, uh, take a picture of the QR code and it'll take you straight to the standard home and living lifestyle store where you can get that. The other thing is a practical product. And I absolutely love this product because y'all, I have kids, right? And to have a well-run home, uh, I have to have, certain kitchen gadgets that make my life easier and that prevents me from having to work harder than I want to work because I'm super busy. And so that product is this one, y'all. This is called a reusable air fryer pot. It's made from silicone. If you guys have jumped on the air fryer train, you know that that thing can get nasty because kids use it and they have no concept of what it means to clean it out when they're done, right? This is going to solve your problem. So what you do, it's on sale for $19.99. You get this air fryer pot and you put it inside your air fryer. And what it does is heat resistant. It allows you to keep the air fryer clean. I've tried um, the paper or the wax paper air fryer liners, my, my air fryer absolutely hates those. It sucks it up and it burns. And then you're like, what is that smell? This is going to prevent you from having to deal with all of that. This, it comes in multiple colors. Right now I have the blue one. Um, that is kind of one of the accent colors in my kitchen. I think I have it in red and I can't see from far away, but there are other colors. Uh, but what's cool about this one is the temperature range. Um, and it's not easily deformed and it is easy 
to wash. I can't stand washing out that air fryer tray. My kids can't stand washing out their air fryer tray. But we have no issues washing this because it's super easy. So go ahead and get you one today. And then the last one. Now I got to give a disclaimer with this one. So y'all see the top that I'm wearing tonight? I am wearing, oh Lord, I look like a grease monkey. I am wearing the Swiss dot smocked frill trim top. Last week, I wore a cute little peach um, V-neck and I sold out of that one so bad. And I don't have no more mediums. They're coming in this week, but I got smalls, larges, and extra larges of the top that I rocked last week. This week is this Swiss dot smocked frill top. Perfect for gay- vacay, but here's the disclaimer. So don't say I didn't warn you. I love this top. It is so cute. However, it does cut right at the waist. So if you are a lady and the Lord has really blessed you up at the top, you might need to go up a size because it's smocked, right? So all of this, this is give right here. Um, But the other issue is if you're well endowed at the top and you got like, you know, like, like a little pouch and some, you got some gut. This ain't the top for you. Like I'm borderline. This almost is borderline, not the top for me, but I like it. And so I wear it with some high waisted, um, jeans. You need to wear it with something either high waist or you need to wear it with, um, If you're going to wear it with shorts, like on vacay on the summer, it's totally appropriate to wear on the beach. However, like if you raise your arms up, you know, like raising a roof, like you ain't ain't going to be, it's going to rise up. It it just is. It is designed to be, um, it's more, it's more like I'm not that big, but I ain't that small and I'm wearing a medium. And for me, I feel like I need a large just because I don't, I don't like how it's kind of cutting here, but I love the top. And so what I've done is I wear it with some high-waisted, um, some high-waist leggings or high-waisted jeans. Now, if you don't have problems in the midsection, like you don't have a stomach and you just, you just rocking your little four and your little six, this is a top for you. It is really going to flatter um, my more petites, um, us, us and ums that's we, we hovering almost in them di- double digits and up, you can wear it, but you're going to have to modify it some because it is designed to, um, flatter smaller waists. And so I know you're like, why would we buy it after all of that? I just want to give the disclaimer in case you buy it, but like, oh my gosh, it looks so cute. Depending on your body shape, it's going to fit you different. You may have to go up a size. So I'm wearing the medium. You know, I ain't hanging out, but I would be if I had on different bottoms. So this is this is your vacation shirt or your. um, You just got to wear it with something higher because there's a propensity that it's going to rise depending on like I'm doing a lot of this. And now I'm going to pull it down a little bit because I just felt a little side of me exposed and I didn't want to be exposed in that way. So anyway, um, those are my products for the night. All of those can be can be obtained at the standard home and living lifestyle store. That is my new Christian lifestyle brand that you guys have overwhelmingly supported. I'm I'm super excited for that Um, product. Inventory levels are good. However, with pro- when product sells out and I have to get new product in, that could delay shipping. But if that is the case, I've sent you an email to let you know that. If not, your stuff is shipping, if not tomorrow, definitely on Monday. Does anybody have any questions? Um, y'all still talking about Calvin? Lord have mercy. Don't fight, you guys. Let's play nice. Like, I don't want to have a theological fight at 10 o'clock. Or, oh, Lord, what time is it? It's 1049. It's even worse. Let's not fight, you guys. Let's not fight. Um, yes, those are the colors 
of the silicone pot. You got blue, red, mint green, and pink. I have the blue. Um, I think you need to have two. Depending, well, if you have one air fryer, one might be okay. But like we have an air fryer at work. We have one here. Like we kind of just, the air, I think we have an air fryer um, in the theater. These are just such life savers. Like I am all about reducing overwhelm and de-stressing my life. And this is just one of those things that does that for me. So anyway, um, that's it, you guys. Hopefully I will see many of you at the G3 conference. Um, registration is still open. Hotels are filling up. Consider doing an Airbnb. But if you want to save yourself 30% off registration, use code uh, G3STP for 30% off. And y'all, this is going to be a huge conference. Um, they're probably, they're definitely going to sell out because the numbers are already out of control and it's not even March yet. And the conference is not until September. So thank you once again for the super chats for all of you guys who are supporting this show. And um, if you want to support the show outside of the super chat system, you can visit the standard truth podcast.com and you can donate there. There's a donate tab on the link. Um, that makes it super easy. Or you can donate like this by hitting uh, the QR code right there. You see that in the upper right hand corner? You can scan that and do that. Or you can scan this to donate via Cash App. Or you can scan this code to support the live stream. Uh, just to be clear, I don't want to leave no room for confusion. I hope you guys know that when you support channels on YouTube, that your donations are not tax deductible. Unless you're given to a church that's a bona fide 501c3 organization, no one else qualifies for a tax deduction. The IRS just does not. It's you're donating um, of your own free will to support the work of the show, the equipment, all of the subscriptions, everything that it costs to run this live stream. That's what you are supporting. But it is not tax deductible. I did have someone message me wondering where their um, end of year statement was. And I had to unfortunately break that news. Uh, I don't know any of my fellow live streamers that have ever represented themselves or misrepresented themselves as a church. I, I am definitely not a church um, or a nonprofit. Um, Standard House Media is the name of my company, but it is definitely not a nonprofit. So no do donations are not tax deductible. So other than that, I'm about to take my greasy self to bed because these lights are hot. And uh, yeah, your girls out here sweating. Good night. Good night, everyone. I love you guys with the love of the Lord. Thank you so much for supporting the show. And here's a word from our sponsor. Lies. That is not the word from our sponsor. God is sovereign over everything. He is sovereign over the entire universe. He is sovereign over nature. He literally has created everything that exists out of nothing. It is the doctrine of sovereign election that empowers and ignites missions. And it is the doctrine of sovereign election that guarantees the success of missions around the world. We will not build the church according to the changing whims of an ungodly culture. We will change that ungodly culture by the power of the immutable gospel. All I have is God wrapped himself in flesh, died on a cross, nailed my sin thereto, was placed in the grave, rose again on the third day, ascended to the right hand of the Father, and is there making intercession for me until such time as my salvation is completed and he takes me home. The more they see, the more they will love him. Stop giving them all this silly fodder and life principles. 
and lay before them. Live your life in solitude, crying out to God. Live your life on your knees. Live your life with your Bibles torn asunder. Live your life for the people of God to be able to present to them the beauty of what He is, the glory of His cross. There is no such thing as Mother Nature. God rules and reigns over everything. There's not a leaf that falls from a tree that God did not call it to fall at that very moment. God is in control of every single thing, meticulously ruling over the entire universe. Join us for the 2023 G3 National Conference on the sovereignty of God.